There we go. Well, so this is my first ever EA event. And I guess the thing that's overwhelmed me the most about everyone here is their in overwhelming enthusiasm and dedication to solving some of the world's biggest issues. And today I want to tell you about how we're trying to instill this same enthusiasm within a very specific, completely non-EA community. So I want you to picture this scene here. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the game of poker, but this here is the final table of the World Series of Poker, the biggest poker tournament in the world. And as you can imagine, for these two people, well, they're, they're even more, they're under more pressure than probably any of us have ever been in our lives, at least, well, for them. And I've been in a similar situation to this once. Now, the stakes weren't quite as high as this, and there wasn't a big pile of cash obnoxiously on the table. Um, I was at the final table of an event in Europe, and uh, I'd beaten 99% of my opponents. Uh, there were eight people left, uh, nine people left, eight between me and the prize. If I finished in ninth place, I'd get 70,000 euros, which is a lot of money. But if I finished in first prize, I'd get 1.25 million. So as you can imagine, I was absolutely terrified. Um, now, the thing that is, is key with poker is that you have these chips. They're your precious resources that you have to use in order to get to your goal. You, uh, uh, you leverage them in the correct way, and you can win everyone else's chips. But if you screw up, you make a mistake, then you can be out of the tournament, and, and that would be bad. So uh, the thing that kept me calm and, uh, I guess, in the end, guided me to victory was my belief in the science uh, and the, so the mathematics behind the decisions I would need to be making. And so, of course, we as EAs are in that same situation now. We have our, our chips, our precious resource, resources, our time, our money, and we have to decide the best ways to leverage them in order to achieve our goals of saving the world. And so, we decided to uh, start a a, fa a fundraising organization called Raising for Effective Giving. And uh, yes, I'm a poker player. I've been on the poker circuit for around six years. And to give you a bit of backstory, I, a couple of years ago, was starting to feel a little frustrated with the game and my, just my life. I, I guess I was looking for that big epiphany of like, well, what, what is my going to be my big impact? Well, Fortunately, I was introduced to a poker player by the name of Stefan Huber, and he, uh, had, he was basically a full-blown effective altruist and had decided to donate the vast majority of any of his poker winnings to EA causes. And this just blew my mind. I, didn't not, I did not know that this kind of generosity existed um, in the world, let alone in the poker world. And he then introduced us to a team of Swiss effective altruists, and they... Uh, they basically came up with the idea of saying, look, we think the poker community will be perfect to, to identify with AI, EA ideas. And so that's how Raising for Effective Giving was born. In a nutshell, it's uh, primarily an EA education tool. Secondly, we want to fundraise for the most effective charities. Membership entails uh, poker players pledging 2% of their gross winnings, which will then be donated and collected quarterly, which equals around 5 to 10% of their income. These donations are then distributed to the most effective charities of the moment. So how have we done so far? Well, here's a bunch of stats. Um, so the thing to bear in mind, we started REG in June 2014, so just over a year ago. In that time, we were mostly, obviously, establishing credibility, uh, focusing on brand awareness, but in this initial growth phase, we've still managed to raise $750,000 so far. We've signed up 170 members. Uh, we've had over 50,000 web visits, uh, which is where we host all the educational material. And one thing that's obviously very important, uh, particularly with a new venture, uh, is maximum transparency. And as such, we tried to provide an unusual amount of that by having quarterly transparency reports. So these are the wonderful people that are the real brains behind the venture. I'm sure some of you guys will know some of them uh, in the audience. There he is, Ruri. Ruri will be uh, joining me for the Q&A, as will um, 
pretty much the best poker player in the world. He's much, much better than me. Um, he's, uh, he's my co-founder with Reg and also happens to be the love of my life. Uh, Igor Kurganov, please also raise your hand. <laughs> uh, so he'll be joining as well. So what's our long-term vision? Hang on, I've gotten way away in my notes. Well, we had a number of people tell us within the poker community that once they'd heard the arguments for EA, that they, they couldn't imagine ever then donating in a non-effective way. And this got us thinking that, well, there's so much untapped potential both within poker and in other industries that's, that are just ripe for EA fundraising. And as such, this is a selection, and I mean, it's just the beginning uh, of some industry, industries that we think um, uh, would identify strongly. Uh, for, for example, surgeons who we all know are, are very rational people as are traders and, and people within finance. Uh, similarly, industries that have a lot of cash flow or big, big lump, lump sum whims like uh, tennis and, and also movie stars, they're generally fairly altruistic. So if we could get them on board with the ideas, well, that would just be fantastic. So how do we convince these poker players to, uh, to join the movement and pledge? Well, first of all, uh, it, it seems fairly intuitive that you would want to convince the most respected uh, and influential members of, of the community. Um, and, and we did this, and it, we found that it had a nice multiplier effect of spreading the message. Secondly, in order to close the gap uh, between EA intention and actual action, uh, you have to follow up with people a lot. Um, we also decided to make uh, some sticky patches, which I don't know if you'll see, but I'm going to demonstrate its adhesiveness now. Ta -da. Uh, the reason we did this is because poker players love to, uh, well, some poker players like to wear patches like this when they play. Um, and we felt that this would be a good way of not only spreading the message, but developing further community feel. Now, poker players, for the most part, are above, ash, uh, above average in rationality. And as such, we, we, because we realize they're a community that are already E's, we need to find ways to make them more A's. Now, we did this by using the, the strongest rational arguments uh, that we could think of, um, particularly those, uh, the classic thought experiments, such as uh, the drowning child and the, the trolley thought experiments, I'm sure you all know. Um, and these were brilliant because they not only elegantly highlighted the people's pre-existing de desires for altruism, um, but they also pointed out just how important paying attention to the numbers are, and also, in my opinion, the most important one, the, the cost of day-to-day -day inaction. We also strategically decided to feature uh, a broad range uh, of charities. Now, all the charities within each of these areas are extremely effective. I'm sure, again, you're very familiar with these. Um, they, uh, we, we update these uh, from time to time based upon their room for, for more funding and obviously uh, upon the recommendations of the evaluators such as GiveWell and ACE. We found that having uh, a broad range like this capitalizes on people's pre-existing uh, interests, emotional attachments to, to certain areas. So for example, if we had a poker player that was very, very passionate about animal suffering, well then of course the conversation uh, to convince them to donate to say the Humane League or Mercy, Mercy for Animals and the amazing work they do with reducing factory farming was easily re more easily reached. Now. We, uh, again, we would expect that not all of these areas are equally effective. Um, but the thing is, is we felt this was a necessary compromise to still feature them all because, A, first of all, each area does have really strong arguments as to why they are super important. Um, and, and secondly, we found, again, that once effectiveness resonates with the donor in, in their chosen area, then the step to perhaps some more abstract ideas within EA um, the, to have conversations about those would be more easily reached, such as talking about uh, preventing future suffering uh, or meta-charities. 
So speaking about meta charities, why do we think they're so important? Important enough to make one for ourselves. Well, this came about by asking ourselves a question, well, we have these funds and we could, you know, our funds and our time, we could just uh, give them to these, to, you know, invest these, these funds directly to these, uh, these most effective charities. Um, is there a way that we could actually just beat the effectiveness of them? Well, in theory, if you take these funds and invest them into the fundraising process, and you can, and you can raise more than $1 per $1 invested in the fundraising process, then you can act as a donation multiplier. Uh, in practicality, the, the average ROI of fun, fundraising organizations within the UK is one to four, which means for $1 invested, they managed to fundraise $4 for the intended causes. So what was REG's ROI? In the, the time it ran in, uh, in 2014, for those seven months, we, we, had, a, we had expenses of around $52,000, uh, which we managed to keep low due to the very strong altruistic motivations of the staff involved. Um, and within that time, we managed to raise almost $550,000, giving us an ROI of one to 10. So of course, the next question we have to ask ourselves is, well, how much would have been donated anyway if REG didn't exist? Well, we found that the majority of poker players, in fact, almost all poker players, were not remotely familiar with the concept of EA before REG existed. Um, as such, the, those who were sort of on the fence about donating to charity, well, once we came along, we sort of pushed them over the edge, and then they did. And those who were not thinking altruistically at all, well, now they're a little closer to being, to, to being don donors. And those who were, uh, and I mean, there weren't that many people that were regularly donating to charity, but those that were, were most likely giving to much less effective causes. Now, the next question, of course, we have to ask is, well, what about the staff's opportunity costs? Um, after all, we've got this amazing team of very smart people. Why, why should they not be pursuing earning to give? Now, this is obviously a very complicated uh, calculation to make. It assumes you have to sort of assume everyone's maximum earning potential. But we, we ran the numbers. And even under assumptions maximally unfavorable to REG, we, we came out to find the adjusted ROI to be around one to five. Now, most organizations only state their direct ROI. So as such, it's reasonable for us to, to continue stating hours of one to 10. So my last question is, well, was REG lucky in 2014? After all, we are dependent on donations from poker players. And of course, we all know poker players a lot of skill, but there's a lot of luck as well. Well, one story I have to tell you about is a player called Martin Jacobson. Now, Martin, there he is, looking uh, very focused, wearing his rug patch like a good boy. Uh, this is him at the final table of the World Series of Poker. Now, he, uh, he had made the final table. He was the shortest in chips, so we, no one really knew what to expect. Um, and he, before the, t the final table played out, he said, all right, I know the standard is to donate 2%, but I'm going to donate 5% of whatever I personally win, which was already amazing. Now, Martin goes and plays the most unbelievable game and ends up winning the entire thing for $10 million, which translated from what he won. He, won, he profited $5 million himself. He donated 5%, so that was 250000 in one go. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. <laughs> On the flip side of that, we obviously have a lot of other members, and quite a few of them, myself and uh, Igor included, had significantly below expectation years in 2014. Um, so if you take those into account, then we, we say that this time period was around a median outcome. Just a couple of other cool stories to share with you. At the beginning of the year, we, we were awarded with uh, the European Poker Award for the best new charitable initiative, which got us a ton of press and was really cool. Um, oh, we just started a, um, a collaboration with the King's Casino, uh, which is the largest uh, card room in Europe. And they've installed a permanent donation box right by the cashier. So whenever a patron has a... It has, a, has a big win or something and is feeling generous, well then they can donate to the most effective causes. 
Not all of our members are poker players. I wanted to also t tell you a little bit about Lee Davey. Now, he's uh, a poker journalist, and since giving him, uh, since he heard about Reg, he has just devoured EA literature. He's become uh, a staunch vegan. He uh, donates significant portions of um, his, his income to uh, effective causes, and uh, he's constantly blogging about EA topics on mainstream poker websites, so he's an, an incredible asset. Opportunities for growth. Well, poker is a multi-billion dollar industry, and there are tens of millions of people playing worldwide and online, so we, we feel that there is a huge scope to grow this. Um, one, one avenue we want to explore further are charity tournaments. Now, charity tournaments were one of the most successful ways of fundraising within the U.S. last year. So we think that if we can get some reg charity tournaments going, that would be really, really cool. Uh, we would love to partner with some of the casinos and some of these really big online poker rooms that exist. For example, there's the European Poker Tour, there's Poker Stars, and so on. My personal dream would be to see, um, on the, at the point of cash out, there being a little tick box uh, for players to tick to just be, oh yeah, here's, here's 2%, or even better yet, a tick box that's already ticked that they have to physically untick. Uh, <laughs> um, an ROI of 1 to 100. Uh, yes, it sounds ambitious, but we do actually think it's possible to have a $5 million plus uh, year. Uh, just to give you one, one story, so there was a player, um, now he's a, a very wealthy businessman and he's more of a recreational player than a professional, um, but he came second in a big tournament for $2.5 million this year at, at the World Series in Vegas, and he donated 100% of that to charity. Now imagine if we can get him on board with EA Charities. And then of course, our ultimate, ultimate goal, replicating this in other industries. We could have a volleying for effective giving, uh, traders for effective altruism, an egg. I think that's effectively, I, I don't know, I'm not very good at coming up with acronyms. Maybe you guys can help me with that. Um, effective gamers giving, see, thank you. Seriously though, uh, we've seen the possibilities of targeting a specific narrow in, uh, community. And we're confident that there's significant potential for a similar project within other industries. Maybe we could have traders giving a percentage of, uh, of their quarterly bonuses or tennis players giving a big chunk of their, of their Grand Slam wins. Who knows? Um, as such, we are looking for expansion funds and staff who, who would be interested in getting involved in these, these kind of projects. And we would appreciate any feedback that you guys have on how we could improve or uh, maximize our effectiveness. Uh, similarly, we would be more than happy if any of you are thinking about replicating a project like this to give you advice. And, and any help that you need. Since our launch a year ago, we have gotten some of the biggest players in POGA behind EA, EA Ideas, and it's been incredibly gratifying to witness uh, the shift in consciousness within the poker community further towards altruism and rationality. I truly believe that if we can change the poker world, and together we can catalyze a similar change within other bigger industries to the point where individuals are motivated not just to make a difference but the best possible difference they can. Thank you. <laughs>